All this even as the 10 year retreats from its highest level since 07. Joining me now here at Post 9 to discuss is Chris Harvey of Wells Fargo. It's good to see you. Good to see you. So, I mean, a lot of people are negative, obviously, yeah. um, as, you, as you just heard. You're sticking, though, to your guns. You're sticking to your target, 4,200 to 4,600 for the remainder of the year. That's right. So, what we think is you're 7, 8 percent off the high. The 10 years at 5 percent, and stocks really haven't created at this point in time. Fundamentals are fine. And I think November 1st is a key date. November 1st is when FOMC happens. But more importantly, it's when we get the Treasury refunded. And this backup in rates all started because the Treasury really mismanaged that. Oh, you mean the issuance, which is That's right. really created a lot of consternation over, well, there's all the supply coming on the market, right. and that's causing the backup in rates, and who's going to buy it? Right. You know. And that's right. And you're going to need more paper. But the question is, can you manage expectations better? If they come in line with expectations, I think things firm. The other thing to talk about is, is a two-stands curve. Two-stands curve was inverted by over 100 basis yeah, points. now it's steepening. And now it's 15, 16 basis points. So going out on the curve, you're not penalized that much. So we could see rates begin to firm here. So what, what gets us to 44.20, right? That's your right. year-end target. Yep. Right. So how are we going to get there? About so, roughly 200 points higher than where we are now. That's really not much, right? We were there. We were almost there the other day. And, and so really what you need is a little bit of stability. You need earnings to continue to do what they're doing. And, and you need the Fed to play ball, the Fed and the Treasury to play ball. You get that and you're probably up to 40. You could be up to 4,600. What, what, is, what does the Fed playing ball mean? It means that, that the Fed under. So, OK, a couple things. You have rates going higher. What you want to see is some sort of feedback mechanism. You want to see people acknowledge rates are higher, it's tighter, and maybe that'll slow things, things down. And they have done that. The other thing you want to see is you want to see the Treasury realize, hey, maybe we didn't do this thing properly back in the summertime, and we'll hit expectations now. We know we need more, but right now we need to calm the market down. And so if you get that, I think things could be very gappy in the rates market because a lot of people are saying to us, hey, the way to lower rates is through higher rates. Hey, I'm not going to buy at 475, but I'll buy on the way to four and a quarter. How about next week? Mega cap. How much does that hold the key for your, your outlook here? Uh, it, it's very important, right? So obviously, if the numbers are good, stocks rally, that pushes the market higher. We saw some good numbers from Tesla. Uh, uh, excuse me, not good no numbers from Tesla, but we saw good numbers from Netflix, right? And if we get some of the mega caps really performing, that will drive the stock market higher. I think they will. The underlying fundamentals are still strong. I don't think we have a whole lot to worry about. Still, you would suggest if you do get a, a pop towards your target, you'd sell it, though. You'd sell yeah. into strength rather than continue to buy it. Why? Th that's right, because if we look into first quarter, excuse me, first half of next year, it's not looking so great. Right? We're having a hard time saying, hey, there's a real great recovery coming. There isn't. Okay? The second thing is there is a lag effect to monetary policy. We haven't seen it yet, but we will see it. The other thing is a lot of your risk aversion assets are oversold. Staples, utilities, low volatility. Last time we saw that, late 18, late 21, that was a big reversal. So what are you suggesting, that earnings estimates into next year are too optimistic? I think so. I think so. You usually don't see great recoveries without a big recession. We haven't had a recession. We hadn't had a big downturn. So where's this great recovery coming from? I, I don't know. But, I mean, we had so much into the system. See, that's why, like, you normally don't right. see anything like we've seen, <laughs> yeah, right? No, no, no that's, You normally that's don't true. have a, a, a tightening cycle no. in as quick a time as we had this time. Yep. You normally don't have a tightening cycle when you had amount of, the right. amount of stimulus you had in the system that we had this time. Yep. So, so let's talk about it. So where would a great recovery come from? The consumer? Consumer's okay, but they're getting a little bit stretched. Is it going to come from corporations? Well, funding costs are kind of high at this point in time. The only way you get a good recovery is things get a little bit sloppy in the first half. The Fed does have to cut, and interest rates come down in the second half. But that's a really back-end loaded recovery, and things have to get worse before they get better.